Welcome to the Dental Disease Series. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to be covering how to best prevent dental disease. Join me, you'll learn something today. So some parts of dental disease are influenced by genetics and obviously we, we can't change the genetics of the animals that we have. Um, and so there are going to be some pets that form dental disease faster than others. And in a general rule of thumb, the smaller the mouth tends to have more crowded and um, out of alignment teeth. And pets with those mouths, especially small breed dogs, are much more likely to have dental disease due to the crowding and poor alignment of the teeth inside of that mouth. Um, this is just one reason why brachycephalic breeds are not um, healthy. They have a lot of issues with their, their mouths, um, including with their dental health. It is in your best interest to when you are looking for a dog, get a dog with an appropriate muzzle length so that the teeth can have the room that they need and that will improve their dental health long term. Cats also have some other unique dental issues that we'll cover in a separate video. That will be the next part to come out in this series. Um, yeah, so genetics we can't change, but what we can do is daily tooth brushing. Um, you need to be doing this at least once a day because we know that that film of bacteria and food particles builds up and then starts to harden after 24 hours. So if you're not brushing every day, then you are not disrupting that film and, uh, and then it gets a chance to become tartar. So you need to brush every day and I will link in the description to some tutorials on how to teach your pet to enjoy having their teeth brushed. It should be noted that if your pet already has dental disease, do not do this because your pet very likely has a painful mouth and you attempting to brush it is only going to cause them pain and make them hate it and hurt the bond between you. So you need to first have your veterinarian treat your pet's mouth, uh, remove any sources of pain before you start brushing. Um, there are of course dog and cat friendly toothpaste that you need to use. This is because the fluoride in our toothpaste, um, if they would swallow it, which they will be swallowing a lot of the toothpaste, can cause them harm. We don't want that. The dog and cat friendly toothpaste will not have fluoride in them and they will also be flavored in ways that our pets tend to enjoy. So it might be chicken or beef or malt flavored um, and, and generally they seem to like those, which makes getting their cooperation a lot easier. <laughs> um, yes, so brushing every day is the best thing you can do for prevention. There is the Veterinary Oral Health Council. They are an independent uh, group that have started looking into products to see if they have research proving that they slow down the formation of dental disease. And if the products have proved that yes, they do slow down dental disease, then they can get that VOHC approved seal. And um, so products that have that seal are definitely worth using and they will have instructions on the product, how to use it in order to make sure that you are getting the benefit of that product. There are some water additives. Um, be careful with those with cats because a lot of cats will drink less when the water tastes funny to them. And so if you're going to try a water additive in a household that has cats, make sure you have bowls or fountains that have additive in it beside bowls and fountains that do not have the additive in it. Just so that if your cat does not like the water with the additive that they will still have plenty of water sources to drink from. We don't want our cats getting dehydrated. Um, dogs seem to be a bit less fussy about this and will be a bit more likely to drink the water, but not all of them. So if you're going to try it, it requires careful monitoring and a conscientious setup to make sure that your pet still has access to water that is not uh, flavored to make sure that they are still drinking what they need to be. 
There are also a bunch of different chews, and there are also kibble that are proven to slow down dental disease. And they have a coating on the outside that helps to break up that biofilm we've been talking about. Um, and inside of the kibble, they are also textured so that, and they're designed size-wise that when the pet bites into them, that it sinks all the way up to the gum line of their premolar and molar before it breaks. And so because of that and the texture in there, it's kind of like a mechanical brush of that tooth every time the pet bites into it. And so it, that diet might be appropriate for your pet. Um, and so you can talk to your veterinarian about that. Of course, you would have to blend over gradually and the kibble is bigger than say average, um, but that's the point. We want it to sink up to the gum line before it splits open so that we get that brushing effect in that mouth. One last thing to think about with all of the VOHC approved products is the caloric content of them. Uh, especially things like greenies are a lot higher in calories than you might expect and because we need 90% of their daily calories to be from a WSAVA compliant diet, we need to make sure that less than 10% of the calories are for all of the treats given in the entire day and that includes dental treats. Um, so make sure that you look at the calories of any options you're considering to make sure that it fits into your dog or cat's daily caloric needs um, and, and go from there. Um, the cat greenies are often a pretty big hit for cats and their catnip flavor is often the most popular, um, but you can play around and see what your cat likes best. When preventing dental disease, the more things that we can do, the better. They will have a bit of an additive effect. So start with brushing every day and then add in some products that have been proven to slow down dental disease if they're okay for your pet based on their medical history. Um, and, and that will be your best bet. So there is a myth that goes around that chewing prevents dental disease. And not really, no. Um, in fact, a lot of chews that are available are very harmful to dog teeth. Uh, so one that people don't often think about are tennis balls. The coating of the tennis ball has a filament in there and that damages tooth enamel for your dog. So do not allow your dog access to tennis balls. Find them another ball of a similar size that doesn't have that coating, you know, it's just a, like a racket ball or something that's just rubber is more appropriate as long as they're not trying to chew into it and swallow pieces, but that's a different topic. Um, but no tennis balls, they wreck dog teeth. Um, also, people often like to give things like antlers and bones, and I, I, I don't understand this. Um, those are too hard for dog teeth, and I see countless number of tooth fractures from dogs chewing on these things and breaking their teeth, which is incredibly painful. And those breaks can rarely be repaired. It often means that the tooth has to come out, which is a real shame. Um, so the rule of thumb, if you're looking for stuff for your dog to chew on or cat, is that it needs to be something you can indent with a fingernail. And you should also not find it hurtful if you smack it against your kneecap. Um, if you smack it against your kneecap and it hurts, it's too hard for your dog's mouth. And if you can't indent it, it's too hard for your dog or cat to chew on and you need to find something else. Um, we want to protect their teeth and not cause them to break because we give them stuff that's too hard to chew. People also often ask about raw hides. Um, it's true that some of them used to be a problem that the, if the dog swallowed too much, that it would sit in the stomach and swell up and not break down properly. But the rawhides that are on the VOHC website, those ones should break down um, in the stomach of the dog, making them less risky. However, you will have to judge if your pet can interact with them appropriately or not, um, and if it's worth um, that slight risk if they do try to swallow too big of a piece. Um, so some rawhides can be okay when used with appropriate caution. 
I hope that you got the information you need about how to prevent dental disease for your dogs and cats. Please comment down below if you have any questions, um, anything that wasn't very clear, or if you have ideas for a future video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and um, we will see you on the next video where we will talk about feline-specific dental issues. Bye!